Welcome everyone uh, to another video uh, on Informatica Tech Talk. Uh, today's video, uh, we'll actually be kind of going over uh, a an existing feature that's been inside of the, the Informatica Cloud platform, um, but one that a lot of customers just don't utilize um, for various reasons. Um, and those reasons can stem from uh, they are uh, legacy power center customers uh, moving to the cloud um, and they've never really uh, needed a spark based engine. Um, they're new to Informatica uh, and uh, they're just trying to get going again, uh, kind of Informatica's elastic offering uh, is is new to customers. Um, customers coming from uh, Informatica's big data or data engineering stack, um, the kind of the on-prem tools, uh, Hadoop customers or even, even Databricks customers uh, of the world um, are used to Informatica's uh, capabilities in the, the big data data engineering space. Um, and so uh, the Informatica cloud uh, elastic offering um, is, is, is really their, their go-to service. Uh, but again, for those customers coming, say, from the Power Center days or uh, moving over uh, brand new to, to the, the Informatica cloud, um, likely just don't know about it. Um, and so, you know, kind of where we start off is just kind of kind of kind of kicking this off of is kind of this this advanced clusters you see here at the bottom. Now, some some of you may have seen uh, this specific offering in the past and, and we call it elastic clusters. Um, because it really was around uh, just uh, very specific services using this. Um, the, those elastic clusters have really evolved into more advanced clusters because it's no longer just cloud data integration using those clusters. It is our profiling uh, capabilities um, inside of data quality. Um, it is the cloud data prep um, functionality. It is the cloud data catalog. Uh, using these clusters for different types of processing, depending on what the different microservices are doing, um, it may tap into this elastic or, or into the, that advanced cluster. So you will see um, a potential rebrand. But really, what these clusters are is is exactly that they they are clustering technology. Um, so very much, um, if you think of uh, in a an elastic EMR or a Databricks, or even a Snowflake with their warehouse capabilities. Um, these advanced clusters are, are auto-scaling sets of machines. Um, these machines will scale up and out, um, depending on your need. Um, very much like a Databricks cluster where I can specify um, my minimum number of workers, my maximum number of workers, I can do the same thing here um, in the Informatica side. And just like some of the other clustering technologies of the world, um, you know, we can start small and then we can grow as your usage expands. So that way you're not always having to pay for a giant cluster. Um, so it will scale up on demand. Um, and then as obviously your utilization goes, goes down or reduces, we will actually scale the cluster back down um, to save you costs. Um, so this is one of the biggest things that customers look at, you know, especially in the cloud, is, is the overall TCO. Um, I don't want to have machines always running. Hence why a lot of customers look at things like Kubernetes and containers and those aspects to quickly spin up compute when it's needed. Well, we've kind of made uh, giving customers an easy button, giving uh, a completely managed uh, clustering approach, but then also the benefit of, of a Spark-based execution. As we all know in today's world of this of this cloud journey, um, you're you're dealing with uh, data stores, you're dealing with data types um, that just really didn't exist on on the legacy on-prem uh, systems. Uh, you know, we were really dealing with files and databases um, of the world and service buses. Now inside the cloud, we all know we have the data lakes, the lake houses, the cloud warehouses. Um, so just the, the flexibility of being able to tap into Spark um, and some of the feature functionality of it just, just is, is extremely powerful. So when you look at the, uh, the this advanced cluster page, um, you'll see that obviously I have um, some already existing configurations of, of different clusters. And if you look at the names, you can kind of see again um, where we have these clusters sit. I have some clusters in AWS. I have some clusters in Azure. I have a couple in GCP um, just because we support a, a hybrid cloud approach. 
Um, and some of some of these clusters are are different. You'll see some of the names say single node. You'll see some of them say BYOC, bring your own cluster. Um, we'll kind of walk through uh, the different flavors of these because there are um, different deployment options. Um, and then, like I said, as you can kind of see some of the the details, you know, what secure agents um, the, the cluster is tied to. Um, and if you're new to Informatica, um, check out some of our other videos where I actually go into uh, a lot more detail on what a runtime environment is. Um, and you can kind of understand that architecture. Um, you can see some details of, you know, what type of machines we're using. Uh, again, as we all know, uh, machine types between AWS and Azure and GCP and OCI, they all differ. But here at least gives you a snapshot of what type of machine instance we're using. Um, M5, C, C5Ns, things like that. Um, the min-max nodes, as I talked about. So if, if you as a developer are trying to come out here and just, you know, what cluster do I want to run? I, I don't need a lot of cost and I don't need a lot of nodes. I'm just, just trying to develop a mapping quick. Uh, well, then you can kind of see, you know, what you're going to get. I'm going to have some machines or some clusters uh, that start with a minimum of two and scale to five or even one to three. So this gives you an idea of, of kind of what's going on here. Now, as we kind of get in um, to the actual configuration is uh, is the cloud platform itself. As I mentioned, is there's there's a, there's about five different ways that you can actually deploy uh, these clusters. Um, Three of them are, well, actually four of them, uh, four of the five you see on the screen here in, the, in this, this cloud platform dropdown um, are completely managed by Informatica. Uh, they manage the cluster on your behalf. Um, and you'll see when we get into just a, a quick dropdown here, when we select one of these, these cloud ecosystems, is you're providing us all of the information. And then what that means is, is that secure agent, that Informatica runtime, it is hosted inside of your cloud ecosystem. So you got a VM running in Azure, you got an EC2 instance running in AWS, you got a compute engine running in GCP. You likely have then that secure agent software running in that respective cloud. And with that secure agent running in that VPC, that VNet, that then we're able to obviously tie into things like IMA and Active Directory and service principles. Um, which basically gives, gives us the permissions to, to manage a cluster. So what the advanced clusters are is actually under the covers is Informatica is actually spinning up an ephemeral cluster. Now, depending on what ecosystem you're in, it, it's slightly different. Azure, we, use, we, we utilize virtual machine scale sets. In AWS and GCP, we use EC2 instances or compute engines um, or compute instances, sorry. Um, but that's all for you. So we will build the cluster from scratch. We'll create new machines. We will download the Kubernetes binaries. We will download all of the Informatica um, R RPMs, all of the intellectual property um, that goes into the cluster uh, and manage it for you. We'll start the machines, create the machines, download, install, configure the Kubernetes cluster, and then get Spark running on that cluster. Again, as I mentioned, as as jobs come in, we'll scale the cluster if if you provide a, a multi node configuration, we'll scale the cluster down and very much like Databricks um, and even Snowflake. Snowflake turns off warehouses when you're not using them or Databricks uh, turns off an idle cluster. Um, after this cluster sits around idle for so long, we'll actually terminate the machines or terminate the scale set machines again only paying you you as a customer only paying for what you're using um so then then you kind of reduce your cost but again depending on which one of these you kind of pick um it, it's it, it acts a little differently and we can get into a little bit more detail about that um if if people have questions um and so the fifth option as i kind of talked about is kind of this self-service cluster um this is really a bring your own cluster so you may say hey you know what I, as a customer, I already have an existing uh, AWS EKS server um, or instance, or I, I have an Azure AKS instance or a GKE over in Google. I, I want to use that cluster. I, I, I have that cluster already set up for some other, other use cases. Can, can Informatica just re-leverage that? Yeah, we can. Um, and, and I'll show you an example of that.
You may also want, you may also have, say, uh, not a cloud based um, use case. You may say, hey, I have a Kubernetes cluster running on my on prem data center, um, and I'm utilizing, say, Rancher or OpenShift to manage that Kubernetes cluster. Could I use that cluster? Yes, you absolutely could. Um, so the self-service cluster is is really kind of any any Kubernetes based cluster. Um, we could actually tap in and utilize that. It could be EMR um, for that case if it's EMR and Kubernetes. Um, but that's the beauty of this is 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 we could completely manage it for you. But there's also the option of uh, of bringing your own along. And then the last one, um, it kind of falls into that that Informatica manage, but I do want to highlight that is, is something that we call local um, cluster or, or single node. Um, basically, what this is, is instead of spinning up an external cluster that's ephemeral, uh, it's multi node, you may just have a quick, a quick development requirement or even a production requirement that I just need a one node cluster. I just need something in Informatica um, that requires a cluster. Maybe it's a Python transformation or it's a machine learning tran uh, machine learning use case that you just, I need a quick cluster. It doesn't need to be very powerful. In this local instance, we can actually use that secure agent machine, that, that runtime that I've been kind of talking about that's running on a VM or EC2 or compute somewhere in your cloud ecosystem. So instead of having to go through all of the heavy lift of creating new machines and things like that, we can actually just use the already existing machine. Gives you tons of flexibility. And since that secure agent machine is already running, you're not actually incurring any additional costs. So there's lots of benefits there. So just kind of just a, a quick highlight of, of how things work. Now, again, if we kind of take a look at just one of these for the video, um, if you select AWS, you can kind of see what what things you're kind of go out there is you know where do i want this cluster to run most likely you're going to pick the same region that your your compute is running in east maybe it's maybe you're in an uh, in, in, in apj maybe you're in EMEA. um it all depends on where you want this to run what type of mass master instance um so we can say let's just say ohio uh you can then go ahead and start picking instances and you can see we kind of categorize these for you you know, accelerated computing, GPU instances, uh, compute optimized, memory optimized, general purpose. So depending on what your use case is, you, you can absolutely pick the instance type. Depending on your security setup, uh, again, this is a, a much deeper conversation, but you, you may want to use different IMA roles um, for the worker instance or the master instance. Um, and this is where you kind of provide that ARN uh, to the instance profile. Um, same thing for the worker instance. Let me go ahead and, and select my instance type. Same thing again. If I want to have an instance profile for permissions, I can provide it. My min max workers, we talked about that. Uh, AWS, you can see that we, we do have the ability to use spot instances and even high availability. So depending on the, uh, the availability zones inside of a region, uh, we can actually spin up multiple master instances. Um, and worker instances uh, for a, a true uh, highly available uh, fault tolerant cluster, something that customers very much want today. Um, so that way they have continuous execution. Um, and the beauty of this high availability is because, uh, because it's a Kubernetes based cluster, because it's Spark, when you do have multiple masters, you have true failover. If one master fails, the other master will pick up where jobs left off. Um, so you won't have to have kind of start uh, restart jobs. Um, so give you some flexibility. Um, the, the block storage, the elastic block storage, um, again, this kind of goes into your use case. Um, you know, how much data is the cluster going to be processing? Things like that. Um, and then we get into some of the, some of the, the more uh, kind of what I talked about, the, the ephemeral nature of the cluster is you being able to provide the idle time. You know, when that cluster sits around for 30 minutes and no jobs are submitting any type of job, then after 30 minutes, by default, this cluster will actually terminate. We'll not just stop the machines, we'll terminate the machines. We'll delete all of the EBSs. We'll delete all of the security groups that we create, X, Y, Z, and even the machines themselves. Now you're no longer paying for things sitting out there, even in a stop state. Um, again, you can control this to minutes, to hours. You can even do a smart shutdown. So uh, using Informatica's AI engine under the covers, we can we start to look at you know your processing window. 
we may see that you process every day between midnight to 6 a.m. And then after 6 a.m., you have nothing. So at that 6 a.m. mark, we're going to probably try to do a smart shutdown. Um, and, and there's some things baked into that. You know, we try to wait for a little, you know, for about five to 10 minutes to make sure no lingering jobs come in. But again, that kind of gives you an idea of, you know, hey, if I really don't know how long I want to sit idle, maybe let Informatica try to figure that out for you. Um, again, for AWS, you can kind of see um, we get into the advanced configuration. This is really where you get into the details. Um, and, and if you're an Azure customer, this would be very same. And, and I'll show you, you know, where do I want the cluster to run? What's my VPC? What's my subnets? What's my security rules? Um, do I have an initialization script that I want to run? Great. Um, and then you can get to, to some, some runtime configurations. Again, we have a list of runtime properties. I want a private cluster. I want to uh, bring my own AI. Uh, uh, AMI um, for my secure OS. Those are type of things that you can actually bring to the covers or bring to the tables. Again, if we take a look at, at Azure, very much the same thing. Worker nodes, master nodes, um, uh, spot instances, high availability, my resource group, things like that. And then again, if you look at the, kind of the, the runtime properties, you'll see things like what's my service principle, what's my key vaults, my secret name, um, all of the kind of Azure specific security uh, setup that we would do with this typical cluster. Um, and the last one I'll take a look at is, is kind of the self-service. Again, you kind of take a quick look at this and you'll notice that what should jump out is, is my cube config. We're running Kubernetes. Those Kubernetes clusters they're going to have a cube config that allows me to to kind of understand how to connect to that cluster and and what's my namespace and things like that. So these types of things are are, are very easy to set up because you likely already have uh, this information because you running the ecosystem or you have a cluster. Um, again, all depends on what your requirement is. Uh, even local, you can see the local cluster I talked about, single node. All those requirements kind of go away because we're running on that secure agent machine gives you lots of flexibility. Now, again, this is just a highlight of, uh, of what an advanced cluster looks like and, and very briefly talking about some of uh, the architecture behind the scenes. Um, again, some of, these, uh, some of these details of how do you set this up and things like that, we could go through the documents online, um, but really it's, it's gonna be dependent on, on what your security setup is, what things are allowed. Um, and, and that's where you just have to kind of work with Informatica and, and kind of run through these things. Um, so that's kind of advanced clusters in a nutshell. Um, I know this was kind of a quick video. Um, I just really want to kind of highlight this and, and kind of get this out to the world that, you know, customers who are looking um, for complex data processing, uh, large data requirements, they, they want to run something in Spark, they have a Python use case, a machine learning use case, um, something of those natures. Um, and, and it, the traditional Informatica engine just isn't cut for that. Um, we do have an engine that, that allows you to do this. So, um, again, you know, hope you guys, uh, like the video, um, hit, you know, hit that like button, you know, if you have comments, please leave them down below. Um, I will absolutely respond. Uh, and if anyone has, um, any questions, um, on the platform in general, or want something further in this, you know, please reach out. Um, and, and, and you know, thanks for your time.